Hello guys, this is the ASMR Medic. I hope you're well. Today we're going to be following the same format as the one we did for the shoulder blade, where we will have drawn um, the image that you can see in the thumbnail already, and I'll be time lapsing that and speeding it up to between five and ten times its original speed to kind of give you some uh, very soothing maybe quite satisfying images. Um, so to begin with, I guess, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, uh, we're going to be covering the rib cage uh, and the sternum. This is now going to be split into two videos just because of how long they're going to be. Um, I ended up drawing more than I kind of uh, planned on drawing. So this is the first part, obviously. Um, and technically speaking, we're not really going to do much of the rib cage. It's mainly going to be the sternum and the costal cartilages, uh, which are the, I guess they are technically part of the rib cage, um, as we begin drawing the uh, midibrium of the sternum. Um, but the actual bones of the ribs, the bits that kind of curve around that we typically think of when we think of the rib cage, which protects and holds all the things together, the parts that the um, intercostal muscles are attached to, uh, primarily. Um, those won't be drawn now, they will be in the second part. Um, so I guess a more, um, a more appropriate title would just be the sternum and costal cartilages, but I wanted to really group this into what is the main group of bones and sort of area that we're thinking of, which is the ribs and the rib cage. So we've drawn the minibrim, which is that large kind of, um, uh, I guess, uh, trapezoid shaped muscle um, bone at the top that we're now labeling as the minibrim. But this is part of the sternum. So we call it the minibrim, but it, it that's a segment of the sternum as a whole. Below it is that long kind of the body of the, what you, what you might think of like a T shape as a total name, total shape for the sternum which we, I've labelled sternum, but more accurately, it's the, the body. And you've got that kind of little notch at the bottom, a kind of, you know, like the, what you might call like a tailbone, which I haven't labelled, unfortunately. It's, and that's termed the ziphoid process, or ziphy sternum. We're now going to put some uh, detail in, some shading, uh, which takes a couple of minutes. But um, as, as I kind of draw these bits in, we can talk about the, uh, the sternum a bit more before we go on to the costal cartilages. So the midibrium, as you can see, is the most superior part of the sternum. Then this is attached to the body of the sternum, that long T part, uh, by what is known as the jugular notch. And this is kind of like a, you can feel this on you, um, if you put your hand on your sternum, and you kind of feel it as you go down from the superior to inferior aspect. And you can feel a number of different knobbly bits, which is why you can see all these different bits of shading. Um, and these are for different attachments and such, but that bit there in the middle where you can feel that big notch at the top, sort of where your first and second rib is, that's known as the jugular notch. I'm not really too sure why it's called that actually. Um, but yeah, you can usually see this if you take off your shirt, you can, this is quite a visible um, piece of surface anatomy. And these if it's done, you can also feel if you kind of dig your finger in a little bit, right at the inferior aspect. And this ziffy stern is, I'm not really too sure actually uh, what, it's, what, what, it, what it's for, really it's the smallest part, it's located, it's kind of a good uh, thing positionally I suppose, about the 10th vertebrae, which brings us on nicely to what we're now drawing at the moment, in, in grey, uh, these are some of the uh, vertebrae uh, that are associated with the rib cage, and you might not really think that is the case, uh, unless you've studied this already, but there are a number of, of vertebra from uh, T1, which is the first thoracic, which is what we'll draw in a second at the top, all the way down to T12 really, um, which is kind of what we term by the ribs, because these are where the ribs originate and then they curve round and they attach to the sternum. Not all of the ribs attach to the sternum, that's why we have things called true ribs and false ribs, um, free ribs, whatever you want to call them, attached ribs. Um, but we'll go on to, into more detail about the ribs in the second part. But you have a number of facets in the in the uh, the, 
body of the sternum which you would have seen that the ribs will curve around to and attach into sort of these sort of facets and demi facets I suppose when it comes to the attachment between the manubrium and the body now you can see a lot of different uh, knobbly bits as well and kind of bits of shading that I've made apologies for that sorry and the vertebrae this is obviously one of the vertebrae that's why I'm labelling the more the vertebra. Okay, so now we're starting to, starting to draw out the first parts of what are known as the costal cartilages. Now I have a proper definition here. The costal cartilage are bars of hyaline cartilage that serve to prolong the ribs forward and contribute to the elasticity of the walls of the thorax. Costal cartilage is also found at the anterior ends the ribs providing medial extension so as we add a little bit more uh, shading uh, to the uh, top part I think that probably is one of the um, the uh, cervical uh, vertebra that I've, I'm, I'm drawing from I'll put some links in the, in the description to the images that I'm copying out here this is obviously not freehand uh, I am copying from an image it's the only way I'd be able to draw um, I'm not that creative unfortunately but now we'll start to draw in um, the rest of the costal cartilages and now we have a number of costal cartilages I guess technically you have one for each of your ribs that's why they're known as costal cartilages um, because they are related to the ribs which is what costal means as you can see here I'm kind of actually changing the direction they're going in I delete them out and I kind of redraw them because I drew them far too straight and as we know ribs from the anterior to the posterior aspect they go at a uh, superior to inferior back to kind of an it back to kind of a slightly superior aspect they go down and they curve back up and there's a lot of mechanical reasons for that in terms of respiration that I'll go on to talk about in the next uh, part I suppose it gives you a kind of a what's known as a, a pump handle or bucket handle effect where as you breathe in your ribs and your costal cartilages it, as I talked about earlier in terms of the, how it provides elasticity they will lift up and they are able to lift with the muscles of your neck and your uh, and your chest allowing you to inspire a lot more air and that's really imp and a seriously important part of your ribcage the way it's designed to angle down in relaxation and to go up in I guess uh, contraction and inspiration and then again, obviously, to push out as you want to expire. Um, you can see that when you get to uh, one, two, three, four, the costal cartilages are kind of combined into one big mass of uh, cartilages. Here, I'm trying to find a way that I can flip it, but I have to draw it all over again. But I didn't find a way, unfortunately, I have to draw it all out myself in the end, uh, which is fine, of course. It gives you a nice bit more of uh, some mentioning interesting images but yeah, as you can see they kind of intertwine and where it ends you might have noticed that there's actually only one two three four five six seven eight ribs that are included in these kind of joint pieces of costal cartilages before um well presumably there are no more pieces solid pieces of costal cartilages that attach them to the body of the sternum and you might think well we have 12 ribs we have uh do we i think we might have 10 i'm not so sure Apologies, uh, it's been a, bit, been a bit of time since I took that exam, but we do have what are known as kind of floating or uh, free ribs, and these are the ones that don't have a piece of costal cartilage that is attached to the middle brim, um, to the body of the sternum. Um, these are still, still involved in respiration, but not quite to the extent that these are, because obviously these have, they can, as I briefly touched on, do this kind of bucket handle effect. If you imagine your hand on a bucket handle and how as you pull the bucket up it allows you to pull the rest of the bucket up with you just like as you straighten these ribs it allows you to inspire more air by increasing the volume um, in babies though I suppose in in in, very, in adolescent well not adolescents in, in young children very young children babies really they will actually have these straight horizontal ribs that I incorrectly drew out at the start before correcting um, 
and this is just through immaturity because they don't really have the need for these bent respite and sort of um, ribs that are uh, helpful to resp respiration as they're growing in their mother's tummy because they don't respire in the way that we do they don't use their lungs they get all of their oxygen through the blood directly from their mother it's only when they need to start using their lungs and the efficiency is really needed that their lungs and um, their lungs and their and their um, their rib cage will develop further to facilitate respiration we're just uh, highlighting in the rest of these costal cartilages the manubrium and the rest of the sternum have been done in a light green and then the next video we'll do the actual ribs themselves in a light blue afterwards as i said all of the information will be in the in the description below for all of the um all of the pictures that i've used but generally speaking i hope that you have enjoyed watching this video um it was really fun to uh, to draw out um hopefully i'll get the next part out too soon it'll probably be a longer video though and less high speed time lapse